Hello guys, Mr. Danamon2050 here, and in today's video guys, I'm going to be showing you how to install uh, Cooler Master Hyper 212 EVO into a case. This is the heatsink and also the fan, so as you can see that the fan goes on there. So yeah, we're going to be covering how to install it, and also how to apply the thermal paste, and actually how to remove thermal paste from your old heatsink and fan. So, to get going guys, first of all, you want to remove your stock fan. In this case, I have an Intel based system, so we're going to be removing the fan here. So basically, you just want to um, turn the... Um, the pins here. So I turn all four of them and just pull it out. It's as simple as that. You want to take the um, little fan header off as well so you don't kind of rip that out. And then you'll be left with a CPU all gunked up by thermal paste as you can see there. It looks uh, a little bit nasty. So you want to get some um, cotton swabs there. You want to get some, some also some toilet paper and some cotton wool. That sometimes might help if it's uh, yeah, dried big time. And also you want to get some isopropyl alcohol. Just bear in mind this is um, 99.9%. Uh, it's very, very pure. And yeah, because it's that, it, it's it's an irritant and it's flammable. So yeah, don't leave it on your skin for that long. However, it won't exactly just burn through your skin. It isn't that you know, irritating. So you want to get your cotton swab first. And yeah, just practice first with just removing the thermal paste from your cooler. Because you are going to be removing thermal paste from your CPU. And if you have a little bit of practice first, should be able to remove it easier. Now basically, the, the alcohol just helps kind of loosen the um, thermal paste and just so it sticks onto the, um, the actual cotton swabs. Some of it will be a little bit more, you know, difficult to get off, you know, there will be some dry parts. Um, that's typically where your CPU is a little bit hotter, but as you can see, you just got a cotton wool and just, yeah, just, just got a ramble on it, basically. So just remove the thermal paste. So you want to be kind of using a mixture of, of toilet roll to cotton wool. Um, cotton wool, to my head, is fine for removing the thermal paste. Um, you just want to go over it with a cotton swab to make sure you've got no fibers or, or anything on it. So there we are, look, all gone. And voila. And yeah, you can put that back in the box. As you can see, look, there's the thermal paste. Looks a little bit yucky. As you can see, look, it's all clean. And uh, yeah, you want to be doing this to your processor now. In my case, I have an i5. So yeah, you just want to remove the thermal paste from there. As you can see, look, it's uh, somewhat clean. I'm just removing some more of the thermal paste here. And uh, yeah, just a similar job. Um, CPUs are more, um, the more, um, should I say, they're tougher than what you think. So <laughs> yeah. Now here's a comparison, guys. This is the Hyper 212 Evo um, heatsink compared to the Intel's heatsink. As you can see, look, um, yeah, the Intel heatsink is really thin. Look, so yeah, look, just a line at the top. So that little section there, well, the Hyper Evo is that long. And I just want to draw your attention to the actual um, copper heat pipes. So there you, there you are, look, you've got a little bit of copper. While on the Hyper 2 Evo, you've got loads of copper. And copper's uh, really good at dissipating heat. Um, it essentially moves your heat from your CPU to your heatsink. And, you know, the more copper you have, the better, you, you know, the fan and the heatsink are going to work together. Now, in terms of, uh, you know, actually putting your, your actual cooler on, so the Hyper 212 Evo, first of all, you want to put your CPU in. So just like that. I would have liked a different camera angle for that, but oh well. So yeah, CPU in there. Just give it a really really gentle wiggle to make sure it's in place. Then lock the arm down. Will they have a crunching noise? If you have actually installed the sock cooler before putting one of these on, you would have uh, yeah, kind of experienced that crunching noise before. So here are the four mounting holes. And as you can see, look, my case actually obstructs uh, me putting the bracket on, but I actually uh, have a micro ATX motherboard in an ATX case, so as you can see, that will not go on. And yeah, I can't exactly put the screws on because the case is in the way. So I'm going to be taking my motherboard out. You guys might not have to do this, but I'm going to be doing that in my case. And uh, yeah, so here we are. This is the mounting uh, the mounting plate. Um, you should have the three holes there, and just align them up to there. Um, this is an Intel based system, um, if if you're installing this for an, a an AMD motherboard it will be slightly different, as you can see there's lots of holes all over the bracket and they're for different socket types. So once you've um, got your, your mounting bracket in place, feel free to put the little bolts in here. And for LG1155 you want to be putting it through the middle hole, uh, so you want to put it through all four, so one there, and another one has to go in here, so that's the second one. And just want to kind of turn it. We'll be fastening these by hand and by uh, screwdriver a little bit later on. So the third one can go in there. That one won't go in properly, but oh well. We're going to have to fasten these with screws, so don't worry about it. And then finally, you want to putting in the fourth one. 
that third one, yeah, that third one doesn't want to go in. And then the fourth one right there. So there we are. Just give him a little wiggle if the wiggle if they don't go in. And there we are, hold on. Can't off yeah. <laughs> so one once you've got one, two, three, four in, what what you want to do, guys, is actually flip your motherboard around and with the actual bolts like you get with these, you want to be screwing them in. So as you can see here, we're going to be screwing these little bolts onto um onto them there. So there's one of them. As I said, we're going to be fastening these with a screwdriver a little later on, so it's uh you know, need to get these that tight so just the second one goes on there we've got the third one so that one screws in there and then i've also got the fourth one yeah i'm not going to show you putting that one on camera so that one was tricky to get on but you know so once they're all in guys um and you've fastened it by hand uh yeah you to be putting your thermal paste on on your cpu now you only need uh, a pea size amount um, thermal paste is, is is quite you know thick. It won't exactly run off onto motherboard, but you want a little pea-sized amount there. So that should do. To be honest, just a pea-sized amount. A lot of people go crazy and draw lines, and some people draw X's. But by putting the blob in the middle, when you put the heatsink on your processor, it'll kind of you know squish it all about. I'm just going to put a little bit more actually, just a tiny bit more. There we are. With with thermal paste, more is less, I suppose. Um, that's how it's kind of um, you know. Um, said more is less, but yeah, just a small amount of thermal paste. You don't want to be putting loads on because it'll spill over the CPU and yeah, it'll be nasty because some of this stuff is conductive. And if it gets onto your motherboard or into the actual socket for your processor, that's not going to be very good at all. So, there we are, thermal paste is now on the CPU. So, what you want to be doing now, guys, is um, you want to get the mounting bracket and you want to um, put it in the open position. And yeah, just screw it by hand into the um, these kind of like bolts here. So just put them in here, and as you can see, look, there it is. It's all put in securely. Now this is just a test, and just for you guys to see which way you put this bracket in, because it, because it does go in different for um, the three sockets. So that's how mine goes in, like that. Now, so you want to remove that, and you want to put your your heatsink on top of the CPU. So as you can see, look, here it is, the Hyper 212 Evo. This is actually without the fans on, so as you can see, just put the heatsink on. But first, guys, you do want to remove the um, little plastic there. And there we are. There's the, there's the copper. So, you want to be mounting that on your CPU there. That'll do. You might want to kind of slide off like mine did there, but, you know, the thermal paste is a little bit... Uh, slidey so once you put that on there it's kind of make sure it stays where it is and then you want to be grabbing the the bracket that's kind of playing around with before so you want to get the bracket and um, remember what position it fit in now you will get some holes here and just remember the um the certain order the holes are in so mine so as you can see look over there there we are so you want to just do that to the bracket and just note a little notch there, because that's that, that notch has actually got to align up with the notch on the the cooler. So here yeah, look, it actually goes there. This is footage from when it wasn't on the actual um motherboard, and this is gonna be facing down towards the graphic card. So I'm just gonna put that on there again, just to show you guys how to do that. So it just goes on there nicely. As again, it might want to slide all over the place. But you know. That's how it is sometimes. So there we are. Now, with, with the mounting bracket, you want to just do that. Thread it through. And you want to expand it again. And then once it's expanded, you want to put it on, on the four kind of standoffs or bolt type things, whatever you want to call them. So you want to line them up with the, the four there. And make sure that the little notch on the actual um, you know, plate matches up. So there we are. It can be a little bit tricky, but if you've installed a cooler before, it shouldn't be too much work. But once you've got it aligned up, um, screw them in by hand. And then uh, it should be all good to go. So as you can see, look, it's now installed. And you want to get a screwdriver. Actually, you just want to tighten these up, just doing a little bit at a time. So you want to be fastening one a little bit. Then moving on to the next. If 
fastening that. So that's what I'm going to do mine diagonally. So it's typically the best because it puts less strain on the CPU. So there we are. I'm going to be doing the other one. So let's fasten this one. So there we are. Just going to speed up the footage just a little bit here. And I'm going to fasten the last one. Might be quite tricky to get the last one in. But there we are. You will probably feel that this is um, uh, just a crushing your, your processor. Um, these are designed to you know kind of fit perfectly, and it is not going to damage your processor in any, way, in any way. The bracket just wants to make sure that it's it is properly pressed down towards your processor, so it can dissipate the heat as efficiently as possible. And as you can do remember earlier, it is thermal paste between the actual CPU and the um, the heatsink, so you know that's kind of there as another layer. Uh, to dissipate the heat and also kind of protection, shall I say? So, just them, to just tightening these up. As you can see, we're nearly done. You you, you just literally want to do it a small amount at a time until the until the not screw in anymore. So there we are. And now voila, that. that's it. And then you should be able to pick it up by the heatsink. And if it doesn't move anywhere, you've installed it correctly. And there we are. Thumbs up. Now the next thing to do, guys, is to mount a fan. As you can see, you get uh, a fan f with the actual cooler, so you get this fan here, and it, it really does glide this fan. It really feels like a high quality fan, and the design of the fan as well is quite unique, uh, which you know, I suppose will optimize airflow. Now my airflow, guys, is going to be going um, from the back of the case to the front of the case. So, so no, from the actual front to the back, the back's the exhaust. So I was just directing there. So air comes in near the hard drives at the front of the case, passes through the RAM slots, and then goes. Um, through the back of the case. As you can see here, you just clip the fan on like that. It's not hard work at all. And you do actually get a bracket if you want to install a second fan. Cooler Master don't include a second fan because to me they don't really think that it um, makes that much of a difference. But this fan is essentially um, you know, pushing air through the cooler, which is a push configuration. You can go for a pull configuration or a push-pull, whatever. But uh, yeah, whichever one you want to do, you want to make sure that you um, plug your fan into the header there. That's all good. So, guys, I showed you how to install Hyper 212 Evo into your um, in, into your motherboard and on your CPU. And just running, guys, a Prime 95 test. This is a hundred CPU um, load test, so it's 30 minutes on the stock cooler. I got 65 degrees, and with the Hyper 212 Evo, I was able to obtain 49 degrees. And yeah, please do note this was set onto silent mode in my BIOS, so the fans uh, spin slightly slower. So with yours, um, you might be getting even lower temps than what you're seeing here. So that's good if you're wanting to overclock. Anyway, guys, thank you for watching. Please feel free to like, comment, and also subscribe. And if you've had any problems with installing the Hyper 212 Evo, let me know. Goodbye, guys.